Alright, we just have done some video footage of some real winners. Those veteran stories are phenomenal. But those aren't the only success stories that we have. There's big successes and there's little successes. There are successes in many different areas. This dog, for example, um, she was on a video, a training video earlier. She was, first time I went to pick her up, she tried to bite me. She was not social, she was not trusting, she was not trained, she would run away, and you had to really be careful. With rehabilitation that we've done in the class, Lily has become a winner in her own right. Once she was socialized and she trusted, then it was fun to do things with her. So this summer, or fall was it, October, Lily went to the, it was a German celebration in Rockford, and Lily won the Dachshund races. And that involved a recall she had to run faster than anybody else. She won both heats, and Lily is the champ. So this dog, although she won't be a service dog, she will be looking for a wonderful new home. And at this point, she can safely be placed because she's been rehabilitated. Toby's a guy that was very abused, lost an eye, never socialized, never had a human he could trust. When the people got tired of him, they dumped him in the Humane Society. Came here, and Toby has said it was very, very difficult. At this point, Toby has become a very fine little man. He still worries, very good with other dogs, uh, we're looking for a home for him that is very stable, very loving, but firm enough that corrects him when he makes mistakes. He's a nice little dog, and he's Lily's best friend. Good boy. Good mate, Pat. He's from our toy department. Toy, second floor. Yeah. Oh, poor Bach has to live in the middle of the toy department. He lives with a Chihuahua, with the Dachshund, two Dachshunds, with Skippy, with Z, and with Jake, the Cocker. And poor Bach, he has to be head of the toy department. So this is one of the big players. He's Bach's friend, too. So. He's a cool guy. Cool. Uh, Kim? Yeah. Here you go. He's a little cocker. He's kind of part of the toy department, too. Um, he's had four abusive homes. That's a hard one to bounce back from. Um, he had one good owner in the middle of that, but then she told him he was safe, and then she had her hip replaced, and then it went back to the other. So Jake came here. He had no trust in humans at all. None. If you looked at him cross-eyed, if you spoke, you raised your voice at all, he would just wilt and piddle. He had people who liked him and would come out and work with him periodically, but then they went away. So he would get his hopes all up, only to be betrayed again. The last one was one of the veterans that told him how much she loved him and spent tons of time and then so every time somebody would treat Jake sweet, he would hope, and then he would be depressed again. He got so bad that he just walked around in a funk because he no longer believed it was possible to be valued. Jake spent a year and a half, um, but really concentrated kennel time the last six months. Nobody's done anything with him, except us. Which means if you act like a regular dog, you get attention. 
If you act like a wimp, nobody likes you. For that reason, Jake decided he liked acting like a regular dog. Now, a couple months ago, it was sad because he wasn't there yet, and a dog that piddles every time you look at it is not a dog that's going to be easy to place. Nobody's going to put up with that in their house. So I had made an appointment to put him down. I got sick. I was sick for about three weeks. And so while I was down, you could see Jake was kind of improving. And at that point, I decided to bring him up and give him one more chance. Jake has made a total turnaround. He finally has decided that he is of some value. He is not worthless like he felt. And now, Jake actually seeks attention. He actually asks for attention. He actually will stand up for himself instead of wilt every time even a small dog, the chihuahua, would boss him around. He now stands up and said, get out of here, you. And his little tail never puts wagging. So Jake is in the process of transitioning into being a normal dog. We're still being very protective of him, but at this point, Jake could be out with the big German Shepherd. Not a problem in the world because he's a big guy. And it is absolutely amazing to see how far this dog has come. Um, eventually, we'll be looking for a very nice home without a lot of drama. This dog has had so much drama in his life, he can't afford it. This is a dog that needs that emotional support that the other ones can give. Toby's the same way. Toby's a dog that needs emotional support. But this is truly a success story. Now success in this case is not bringing him up to the normal for every other dog. It's bringing him up to the best normal we can do. Which happens to be pretty much the same story as some people. You're not going to maybe be totally whole. But you can come up as good as you can come up. And that's Jake. So one of these days, Jake is going to have a home. And he will be fine. He will be somebody's loyal, loving pet and he will do silly tricks, and he will chase a ball, and he will run around, and he will give kisses, which we don't like. Yeah. Anyway, this is a pretty nice success story. Jake is, Jake is kind of one of those heartbreaking dogs that even though, yeah, he's a nice dog, you have to be careful how you place him because he can't afford another failure. He just can't afford it. So, as much as I don't want a copper, Jake's the best cocker I own. He's a pretty nice guy. He is a good dog. Good for what? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, but he would never take this. He would never take this. He's come so far. Huh, Jakey? Are you Jake Jake the Big Mistake? You are! Hey, are you Jake Jake the Big Mistake? Oh, I know. He works for everybody. He does. He does. Now, Roy was a dog, a little Pomeranian. The woman bought him. At four months old, she couldn't stand him anymore. Hadn't done anything with him. Couldn't figure out why he hadn't figured out how to be house broke. I mean, uh. Anyway, so Roy was raised here. He was taught some basics. But when you have these little more diminished dogs, more dependent dogs, it's really important that they get a taste of what it's like to be in a home and what it's like to be worked with kids and cats and other dogs and in the car and all that. So all of the dogs, we try very hard to give them a smattering of other normal besides here. Now this is Carol and her daughter, Raina, and I often will allow people to kind of bond with a dog to, on a limited basis, part-time basis, and they'll take the dog home and work with the dog. Now, this is not a midget, this is a child. And what that does is teaches this dog how to be a kid's dog, right? All right. 
So, they take him home and they've taught him all sorts of stuff. So talk about it, Carolyn. Um, it's been so much fun to work with Roy. Um, Raina has actually gotten to do um, almost exclusively the training with him. She has um, taught him to be a reading dog so that he's able to go to programs and to libraries with children and uh, to sit calmly in their laps, to snuggle with them and listen to them read, um, which improves their reading skills. It also improves Raina's reading skills, um, and she's the one that gets to practice with them the most. Um, she has taught him several different tricks, um, how to walk on a leash and to sit, um, to be easy and to wait, um, how to be good around other dogs, to um, help him feel comfortable in social environments that he doesn't worry about being around other dogs. Um, it's taught Raina a lot about training dogs, and she is actually able to help with some of the lessons to be able to use Roy as a demonstration dog and to be able to show people that if a seven-year-old could do it, that they certainly are able to do it. Um, that it's not rocket science, but it takes um, being honest and patient, to be consistent and loyal, um, to be trusting and trustworthy, um, to um, have lots of fun, and that having a dog uh, working with them and training them makes it worthwhile because what you end up with is a wonderful relationship and um, a dog that is so much more um, in your home than just a pet. And one other thing about it, from working with Roy, you're able to do what at home with your other dog? Raina has a new dog in her house. And what do you speak up so that they can hear you? And I also Talk to the camera. And I also the other dog. So the things that Raina learned from training Roy, helping with Roy's education, Raina can take and use those things, right? So when Roy comes to visit, you've got two dogs to train, don't you? Yes. And tell everybody what you're doing. Tell them about your shine book. Aren't you teaching your dad by writing it in the book and showing dad the book? Yes. Cool. And he drew all the pictures to show him exactly how to do it. So step Raina's become a teacher. What? A teacher. All because of that little hairy dog. That's pretty cool. Very cool. That's very good. All because of a little unwanted Pomeranian.